Hello, everyone. Gonna give a minute or two, let um, things load here. Hi, Jen. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Good. I see you all nice and set up in that kitchen of yours. Heck yeah, so excited. All right, we're gonna give it a minute um, and let let uh, everybody get into the Zoom. I know Jesse's probably letting people in one by one, but so we are so excited that everyone is here. Yeah, I think I got everyone going. So um, just to preface, first time ever hosting a Zoom meeting and I am doing this from my computer. So I'm, I played with it earlier this week. I think I got it, but just in case. Got it. <laughs> got it i told her i use zoom like eight hours of my day and i still am like hmm, how exactly do this though but yes so we are going to get started in one minute and see who else is able to jump on with us so thank you for those that have come along um if you don't have your name in the zoom picture can you drop your name in the comments that might become really important later. So we know who is here with us. So make sure if your name is not with your picture that you uh, drop your name in the comments. So. All right, in the interest of time, we're gonna get started here. So thank you all for joining in as Jess and I are launching our cosmic community. We are so excited and blessed to share our passion with all of you. Um, for those of you that don't know me, or Jess, we're sisters, I'm not sure how many of you caught that, but um, yes, I am Jen. I live here down in Deland, Florida, and I have been on a journey of my own for so long, and my passion truly is about helping others, serving others with mealtime dilemmas, because who knew the hardest question would be, what's for dinner every single night? So why stress over that? Let's take the dinner time dilemmas and take them out of the equation, make it easy for you. Let's find you some healthy options, tasty options and all of that. So I am a full-time working person out of, out of the home. I work for a large financial institution and on the side, I sell a product called Epicure. So it's all about good food, real fast, Canadian company. Those of you that know anything about the food industry knows Canada is leaps and bounds ahead of the United States as far as what they allow in their food. Um, so it's all natural, gluten-free. I can go on and on about the Epicure products, but truly what I want to share is how that has helped me personally and how it's helped others that some of you are here with me. So if you're one of my Epicure customers, one of my friends, please drop a note. How has Epicure helped you directly? So over my lifetime, I'll be honest, I was always that fat kid overweight my whole life, always struggled. I think I started my first diet program at the age of like 11. I remember my mom signing me up to go to some hospital and we learned about eating habits. And I'll never forget the thing I took away, again, like an 11, 12 year old is how to dunk versus dip. What the difference is. So I have struggled with my weight. I've gone up, I've gone down. I've done weight loss surgery. I literally have tried every diet known to man pretty sure every diet. And what I found honestly is you cannot out exercise a bad diet. You cannot restrict yourself. You have to let yourself live life. And so what I love about Epicure is in my busy life, it's allowed me the ease of eating in my home. I have tasty meals. I have healthy meals. I have quick and easy and they keep within my health goals. So I can't wait to share more, but we're going to pass it over to Jess so she can share about herself. All right. So those that don't know me, my name's Jess. I live in the Southern Appalachian mountain region in North Carolina. So um, we just moved down here. I've worked professionally as a massage therapist for the last eight years. Pretty quickly getting into body work, I realized, hmm, I really want to get into the energy system. So I took a Reiki class, took some craniosacral, started diving into Ayurveda and chakra systems and all different ways to um, essentially give language to energy. 
And so I've been a Reiki master for the last seven years. And two years before moving to North Carolina, I started getting real serious about astrology in my studies. I was working with a mentor up in the Chicagoland area. Shout out to Teach, Dave Gunning, out of the Theosophical Society. He's the bomb. <laughs> and working with him um, and kind of doing a fast action um, couple year study with him just really got me even more into astrology. I've always had an interest, and oddly enough, my earliest astrology memory is reading my sister Jenny's Linda Goodman's Sun Sign books when I was, I don't know, five or six years old, browsing through. I knew I was a Pisces sun. I found my birth date in that thing and was reading personality traits, and I was like, man, this is really interesting. Um, so I'm really happy to get um, deeper into it. The more I learn, the more I see how validating it is for people and um astrology doesn't have any sort of like faith-based thing it's been practiced by cultures for thousands of years there you know the the romans the mayans the ancient chinese the egyptians and polymaths would study the celestial movements to understand cycles and agricultural practices how it related to seasons um in the traditional like Hellenistic period, they started relating it to mundane events. Like how do these cycles relate to what's going on with human affairs on earth? Um, more modernly, it's used more as like a self-reflection tool. Um, you know, you think about hundreds of years ago, astrologers were doing charts by hand and it was all about the mathematics. And now you can go to astro.com, type in your information and poof, you have your chart. We have the internet, you can, you know, find out so much more information. It's so much more accessible than it's ever been for just the lay person. Um, but generally now it's used um, to understand archetypal patterns, you for a <laughs> personal growth, um, insight into relationships, life choices. Um, it's not really about like fate or fortune. It's more about a science that observes um the movements relates it to the affairs and it doesn't override free will. It um, helps us to make informed choices. And again, just really gives a language to the ineffable influence of energy that's around us all the time. So I just want to put that out there. Um, I live in a very conservative area. And so as I've been building astrology community here, it's something that I've had to educate people on just so that kind of takes the the woo out of it or just have a little bit of basis of the history of astrology um so that's kind of the basics of where I've come from kind of how I've gotten into astrology and so my purpose and my hope with this is that I want to provide astrology information for beginners but I also want to get a little bit deeper into some more intermediate knowledge so um, I'll kind of preface before I start what sections what so if you don't understand things I'm talking about know that the replay is going to be on YouTube something you can come back to and what you don't understand just let that go and it's a whole new language that starts to set in the more that you listen about it and I will still go over some basic information so to get started I wrote a Virgo meditation that I wanted to um, guide us on just to kind of start to set the tone for what Virgo energies are and then um, we'll get into some chart examples, get into a little bit more of Virgo information. And what I'm really passionate about is medical astrology. So we'll be getting into that, blending my knowledge of the body systems with astrology and how to make it practical. And um, then we'll hand it off to Jen to finish off the class. So to get started, um, as long as it's safe, which the people I can see, it looks like you're not operating heavy machinery or a car, but... Um, make sure that you're in a safe place, find yourself to get comfortable, whether you're sitting or laying down, whatever feels best for you. And just allow yourself to soften into my voice, knowing that I'm here to guide you into a comfortable experience. Now I invite you, if it feels okay, to close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And repeat this a few times, letting go of any of the tension and stress that's built up from your day, your week, your month, or your year. And just allow your body and mind to come into this space. Virgo is the sign of service, perfection, and health. 
It is associated with the element of earth. And in this season, you will use your breath to connect with Virgo energy to ground yourself into the present moment. Now bring your attention to your lower abdomen. This is where Virgo energy resides. This is the center of your digestion, your metabolism, assimilation, which are essential for your physical and mental well-being. As you inhale, imagine that you are drawing in earth energy from the ground below you. Feel it fill your lower abdomen with warmth and vitality. And as you exhale, imagine that you are releasing any toxins, waste, or negativity from your system. Feel it leave your body through your mouth. Continue to breathe in this way, inhaling earth energy and exhaling toxins. Feel yourself becoming more grounded and balanced with each breath. Now bring your attention to your heart center, and if you feel called to, you can bring your hands there too. This is where your compassion and your gratitude resides. This is the center of your service and your contribution to the world. As you inhale, imagine you are drawing in love and appreciation from the people you serve and help. Feel it fill your heart and joy and fulfillment. And as you exhale, imagine that you are sending out love and appreciation to yourself and others. Feel it radiate from your heart to the world. Continue to breathe in this way, inhaling love and appreciation, exhaling love and appreciation. Feel yourself becoming more compassionate and grateful with each breath. Now bring your attention to your third eye center between the brows. Again, if you feel called to, you can bring your hands or your fingertips to this area. This is where your intuition and your wisdom reside. This is the center of your perfection and your excellence. As you inhale, imagine that you are drawing in clarity and insight from the universe. Feel it fill up your third eye with light and knowledge. And as you exhale, imagine you are releasing any confusion, any doubt or criticism from your mind. Feel it leave your body through your mouth. Continue to breathe in this way, inhaling clarity and insight and exhaling confusion or doubt and criticism. Feel yourself becoming more intuitive and wise with each breath. You have now activated and balanced Virgo energy centers, your lower abdomen, your heart, and your third eye. You have also grounded yourself to the present moment. Take a quick moment, feel the effects of the session on your mind, your body, and spirit. Thank you. This completes our Virgo meditation. So I just wanted to start with that kind of bring in the different areas in our body, the ways that the Virgo archetypal energy kind of resides in our body um, and different patterns that you'll find with um, what I'm going to go into when we get more into Virgo specifics later on. So the first astrology that I wanted to, to present to everyone tonight has to do with um, me and Jen just kind of getting to know us and our synastry. So in astrology, when you blend um, overlay two charts on one another. It's called um, synastry. So Jen, can you see the chart on the screen? I got it, sister. All right, cool. So far I'm doing it. Now let me get my little highlighter pen. Cool. All right. So th these are our um, natal charts. Again, if you've never gotten into astrology, this just looks like a bunch of craziness. I understand because before I started getting more serious about it, it's just a bunch of glyphs and the circle and yeah, it means nothing. So the things that I wanted to point out between me and Jenny, um, we have some really pivotal points that are at the exact same degree point. And so in astrology, when you have two planets or points at the same um, section, that's called a conjunction and it activates those energies in one another. The first thing that's really prominent with me and Jen is that our North Node, my North Node and her Moon are at 23 degrees of Pisces. Um, the Moon moves very quickly. Within a 24 hour period, it's moving 13 degrees. So the fact that it's at the exact same point, I mean, the Moon was probably from like 12 to 
like the late 20 degrees in that time period. So the fact that it's at the exact same degree point is very um, meaningful. And having moon and north node, it brings together, as you can see, Pisces in my chart is the fourth house. And over here, fourth house. I don't, oh, it's showing up the same on both. This isn't the right chart. I apologize. But Jenny and I, we have our house systems are one off. She's a Scorpio rising and I'm a Sagittarius rising. So it brings together our fourth and our fifth house. Um, on Jen's chart, it's her fifth house. And so it's kind of this, uh, like, you would read that as like healing, having fun with family, and like this sense of destiny of working together, because North Node and Moon have a lot of sense of destiny. Um, there's this sense of working together for fun and fourth house is family. So like the fact that we're bringing leisure and family in together with our business venture um, speaks to that part of our chart. Also another prominent chart point that we have right here is nine degrees of Libra. My midheaven is at nine degrees Libra. Midheaven has to do with your career, um, your legacy and like what you're meant to do in this life. Jen's um, Saturn and Jupiter actually is right there at 10 degrees. So that's a really close chart point too. Um, Kind of in layman's term to put that together, it's building successful business um, in a joint venture. And the fact that it's activating my 11th house has to do with community. Um, so that is also another really supportive point and something that like my big sister Jen has always brought structure to my life um, and has brought blessings in many ways, which Jupiter is always there to bring um, bestow blessings on us. The other chart point that's really fascinating is Jenny's ascendant is at 12 degrees of Scorpio. That is what my natal Pluto is. And also my moon is really close by with nine degrees Scorpio. So the ascendant is where the chart is at the, the Eastern horizon at that moment in time. So in a 24 hour period, it runs through the whole zodiac sign. So every two and a half hours, there's a new sign on the horizon or what your ascendant is, which is why when an astrologer asks for your birth time, that's why it's so important because it changes um, so quickly. So um, to have the ascendant at the exact same point of my Pluto, that's really prominent. And the fact that my moon's there brings that in too. Um, this blends our 12th and 1st houses. So it's kind of like spiritual communication and putting out um, those types of ideas like into the public eye with first house being prominent. Okay. There's also um, a matter of like bringing like me bringing transformation to you, Jen, because Pluto, be, like my Pluto sitting on your ascendant. So it's like something, things that happen in my life are going to be bring big transformation to your life. Um, so that's really like fascinating too, that that's there. The last thing is if y'all can't tell, and if you know us, we have a ton of Capricorn energy, both of us. Um, and specifically Jenny's Venus, which has to do with finances and Venus also rules relationships is conjunct my zero degrees Uranus, which is in a tight conjunction also with my Saturn right there. Then my second house of finances. So it's also another prominent, like, quick business idea that goes well is a way to put that and that we're willing to put in the hard work because again, we both have Capricorn stellium. So um, we're here to work, um, get it done and willing to put in the hard work. That's the big thing with Capricorn is that like they won't, they don't give up. Uh, so those points were really fascinating. Now let me stop the share there and pull up the next chart. The next thing I wanted to show was the conception of the class that came in. So, Jen, what was it? It was the day after the Leo New Moon last week. Leo New Moon was on Wednesday. And I'm at work the next day. It's Thursday. I'm on a little break. Let me get back here so I can share this screen now. And I text my sister really quick, a bunch of light bulb emojis. And then what did you say, Jen? I don't even have, a. I don't even remember. That's how crazy my life has been. <laughs> you said, I love these text messages. 
because when oh. I have, when I have things come in, it's quick, fast, and dirty. So um, my Mercury's in Aquarius. I learn quick. I talk quick. I everything ideas come in really fast. It's it's just how I'm wired. So um, when this idea came in, it um, again was after the Leo new moon, which is what rules Jenny's 10th house. So the fact that Leo new moon is like new beginnings for her career, that's like what's being activated in her right now with the moon cycle. Um, there's also, it was activating my ninth house, which has to do with teaching. So again, because our ascendants are one house off from one another, it blends like two houses that are naturally flow. So there's like this really nice ministry with that too. Um, the ascendant of this chart right here. Oh, hold on. I don't have the annotation on. Um, the ascendant of this chart is at 22 degrees of Pisces. So that has a, you know, that is, again, that ascendant moves really quickly. And then that's one of our like big um, points that we share. So that's really fascinating that the fact that even just a couple minutes different would have made a huge change with that. Um, another thing that I wanted to speak to that's kind of a more intermediate, um, a more intermediate topic for traditional astrology is called um, time lords and your annual perfections. So it gives one planet for your entire like 34 years of life or whatever. It goes from birth date to birth date. It gives that planet extra potent energy, natally in your chart and the transiting planet too. So this year, mine is Mars because I'm in a 12th house perfection. Jenny's in a seventh house perfection, making Venus very prominent in her chart because Taurus is her seventh house. Venus rules Taurus. Um, so all of these different um, points that we've had activated with coming up with the class and then even the choice of time that we've done to do it. I mean, it's activating my Mars. It's activating her Venus. So there's a lot of astrology behind it that's really supportive. It's really... Um, just reassuring. I felt like we've always were going to work together. And now here we are, you know, something I love cooking. She loves astrology. So it's like, what are, why, how did we not figure this out sooner? Is kind of what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so real quick to switch points, we're going to get a little bit more basic Virgo. Um, Virgo is the end of summer, right? It's the end, it's the harvest time. Um, the other earth energy of Taurus, like we've We've maintained our gardens, we've put in the work, and now it's time to reap our reward. So Virgo is an earth, is an earth sign. There's also um, Capricorn too. Capricorn is more, the way that it kind of differs for the earth signs is they like to plan to build. And Taurus likes to stay the same. Virgo is always ready for a plan. Plan A, plan B, plan C, D, E, all the way to Z, and we'll get into double, double alphabets if we need to. They've thought everything through. Um, they're all about lists. They love, um, it's a feminine sign, so it's very receptive. Um, Mercury is the ruling planet, so there's a lot of um, intellect and thinking a lot. So Virgos can tend to like overthink, get critical. Some, per some perfectionism is a lower polarity of Virgo energy. Um, the other sign that's also ruled by Mercury is Gemini. So there's kind of this similarity between them. But Virgo is more, more internal because it's the feminine sign, whereas Gemini is masculine. So if you know Gemini, they're really chatty. They're really external. They're loud and all of that. Virgo has that, but it's more like in their mind. They're more thinking about it. Um, and so it's a little bit more of a quiet mental energy in that way. Um, and they're very flexible. Um, they're ready to make a change and Virgo season gives us the time to really start to like, it's a good time to declutter your home because they love to organize. It has to do with mealtime rituals. It has to do with making the most of your harvest. Like don't put anything to waste that like Virgos would not appreciate that. Um, which always makes me think of like my dear uncle Jim is a Virgo son. And when I think like he just so encapsulates so many of Virgos tendencies. I mean, he's a plant lover. He loves gardening. He's he thinks of things in his own way and he's, he's always putting things down in lists and um, he loves plants. Like that's a huge thing with, with Virgo too. It's a good um, time to have a really good attitude for gratitude. That's a good sense for Virgo. Um, also discovering a new craft, maintaining your garden, supporting your local farmer's markets. These are all little things that we can do um, 
to kind of harness our Virgo energy. The other way to learn about a sign is kind of looking at the axis. <clears throat> so the opposite sign to Virgo is Pisces. Um, so kind of, they have a lot of similarities, but then they're also have their own differences. So they're, they're about health and healing, but Virgo is more physical body. Pisces is more spiritual. So Virgo is more health and Pisces is maybe more healing, um, physical versus spiritual. Virgo is very individual where Pisces is much more about the whole. Um, Virgo wants to have a plan and Pisces works on faith. There's a sense of being logical with Virgo versus mystical with Pisces. Um, but they're both about service. They're both about meaningful relationships and they're great at compromising. Um, the body systems that have to do with Virgo is your gut health, your metabolism and your assimil assimilation. And this has to do with, because it's Mercury, it's ruled by the planet Mercury. So Mercury has to do with communication. It's the nervous system. And like in the recent years, or at this point, a decade and a half, two decades, what do they call our stomach? The second brain. We have now more neurons in our stomach than our brain has had some research. And so there's this sense of like with Virgos, if they get really stressed out, it really affects their digestive tract. Um, and everyone can kind of feel into that. If you're anxious, like diarrhea can happen. If you're really depressed, constipation. So like our mental state has a lot to do with how we digest food. Um, kind of the speed here is also going through the body in the same way. So Virgos in general, because they have a lot to do with your physical health, are very health conscious. Um, if you have a fussy Virgo constitution, either like in your natal chart, Virgo or Mercury is afflicted in a negative way or in like in a challenging way. Or if you have some sort of Mercury transit activating your chart and causes some friction, ways that you can kind of help to balance that is through elimination diets, relaxation, really ramping up that parasympathetic nervous system, massage, acupuncture, a bath, whatever that is for you. Probiotics are great, fermented veggies, bitters, whole fibers, and one of my favorite practices for really good gut health is, take it away, Jen, lemon water. Starting your day with lemon water. So I wanted to share a really quick thing that I love to do. I prepped some lemons ahead of time, actually, while Jesse was talking a little bit, but I actually use my silicone um, mold to make lemon ice cubes. And so it's a really easy way to get lemon water into my morning. Um, I literally will just snap this together. I'm not gonna do them all, um, but I got my lemon slices. I'll put some lemon in, juice in each of them, fill them up with water and then make nice lemon ice cubes. So my first morning water, I've got lemon ready to go and I don't even have to sit there and slice and cut because again, let's make it easy, let's make it practical and let's get this stuff done. So I'm gonna finish these and I will have a yummy lemon water to start tomorrow morning. So who is here to chat about let's make meal times easier? So I actually realized I forgot my scissors. So hold on, it's one second. So Jasmine and I will also both be offering giveaways. So stay tuned, don't miss out. So when I talk about mealtime dilemmas, one of my favorite things is to talk about meal planning. And a lot of times people get caught up in meal planning and making it overcomplicated. So my thing that I love to do with people is let's simplify meal planning. It literally can be as easy as planning out a protein, a carbohydrate, and a veggie. And that can just be your meal plan. So if you think about a week, just pick out three things and you can put together an easy peasy meal. Um, one of the things I also like to do, right? Because again, trying to keep things a little bit easier is have each member of a house pick out their favorite meal. And that way then throughout the week, you know, you've got at least somebody's favorite. My house, if my husband gets to pick, it's meatloaf. Meatloaf is always on the menu if we're picking out the favorite meal for the week. Me, I like to go a little more crazy. I like things like chicken souvlaki, but that's just me. And that way we all get a little bit of what we like. Don't overcomplicate meal planning. I also like to think about the week, right? Five weeknights and the weekend. I like to plan for five nights. I leave one night to go out, take out whatever, because again, life happens. And I like to leave one night to clean out the fridge. It's usually my night of garbage night. That way leftovers, it's like a fend for yourself. 
clean out the fridge, let's eat the leftovers, let's throw away what's not gonna get eaten and start the week again. So that's one of my favorite meal tips is I love clean out the fridge night. Then let's think about another way to meal plan. Let's, let's plan around our protein. So pick out maybe a chicken dish, a beef dish, a pork dish, a fish dish, and maybe a vegetarian dish. There's five different ideas and you get that variety, which keeps us so satiated in the kitchen, makes it a little more fun. Again, you don't get stuck in those ruts where you feel like you're making the same thing over and over and over again. Another way I meal plan is I do it around ethnic foods. So whether I want to go a little Indian with some curry or butter chicken, maybe I just want family comfort foods like hamburger helper type uh, cheeseburger pasta or macaroni and cheese. Maybe I want to do breakfast for dinner with like a Bernays sauce. Maybe Asian with some beef and broccoli, some yaki udon. You get the idea. If you keep the variety coming, it keeps you excited. My favorite is usually Mediterranean night. So chicken sulaki, damir, my favorite. Again, this is just an example of just some of the things we have with Epicure. If you're interested, let me know. My other thing is I like subscription boxes. I don't know about you. I like the surprise. I like the excitement. And my favorite is, of course, we have a monthly subscription box. I get seven things delivered to my door every month. And it comes with a recipe guide and a meal plan, grocery list. Again, now it's done for me. I don't even have to do the thinking. So with these seven products, right, all sorts of fun stuff. You can see you get full size drawers. Trust me, it's worth way more than $30 you spend. This is just an example of this month. We get a dessert. We get meals like pulled pork, poke bowl. I mean, we're going to Hawaii now. General Tao. And what we're gonna use tonight, lemon garlic chicken. So for those crazy busy nights, I like to do freezer meals. And if we think about kind of what Jesse was sharing about the Virgo energy, it's also a great meal thing to do, to gift to somebody, is to put together an easy meal for them. So we're gonna put together, it's called simply the zest chicken dinner. Um, and if you've never done a freezer meal, it literally is as simple as, I always like to do the freezer meal in one bag and then I'll use an extra bag on the side. I also use um, not disposable bags. So let's chop up our pepper. If you're interested, I always chop my peppers upside down. Um, it keeps what I call the pepper confetti inside, otherwise known as the seeds. So you're gonna slice the pepper. And then in the interest of time, I'm not gonna slice the whole pepper, but literally as simple as that. I want to be a Virgo. I don't want to waste. I had a little bit of a yellow pepper. We're going to throw that in too. I hate wasting food. Probably why I love to clean out the fridge night. Same thing. I got a little bit of a green pepper left. So as you can see, we're putting in all sorts of colors of the rainbow. My other favorite way to eat is to do that. I'm making it easy on myself. I could get fresh green beans, but heck, this is going in the freezer. Dump in some frozen green beans. Same thing with broccoli. I could sit there and chop broccoli if I wanted, or I could dump in some frozen broccoli. Talk about then I'm gonna finish it up with a protein. So I'm gonna add in my chicken thighs. That's my favorite thing. Um, and I'm not gonna do it now because I don't wanna get chicken goop all over my hand. But you literally just pour in the seasoning packet. So again, lemon garlic chicken, so good. If you've ever done 40 clove garlic chicken, this is just like that. A couple tablespoons of olive oil. I mean, I could measure or I could just pour. I would add in my chicken and then I would just stir it up and smush it up. Lay it flat in my freezer, freeze it, dinner is done. All I would do when I cook it is throw it on my sheet pan. I'm gonna get real easy with the thing of mashed potatoes. What a great gift, right? You could freeze that meal pan or, or the meal bag. You could get the mashed potatoes and you can give it to somebody. And that's really speaking to that Virgo service, right? To give back. So think about the moms in your life because we're all about the women here in the Virgo season, right? Think about a new mom, a, mo a single mom, a busy mom, an empty nester, somebody, a family who's going through a rough time. So what Jesse and I would implore you is if you can think of giving back this month let's give back to somebody and maybe it's the gift of food um so that's kind of something that we'd like to share is if we could give back in that way so we've only got a few minutes left i'm going to share a video 
check out our YouTube channel. So that's one thing, right? We've got some giveaways. So those of you that are here with us live tonight, you're all going to be entered into a drawing. I'm offering some fun meal, maybe my favorite scissors, and Jackie's got a deal for you too. For everyone that's here live tonight, um, you can go to my website. It's RutherfordAlchemyHealing.com. We'll have it typed out. You can find it on social media. Anyone, when you book an appointment with me in the appointment notes, just put the word maiden, M-A-I-D-E-N. That's the symbol for, Vir for Virgo. And you'll get $10 off any service. If you're local to Western North Carolina, we can include body work, um, energy work. I have a signature session called Trisol. Otherwise, astrology readings I can do on Zoom. I do on the phone, however you want to do it. Um, so yeah, that's that's my giveaway for everyone here tonight. $10 off any service. And we would love your feedback. This is something we're looking to offer every month, speaking to whatever astrological season we're about to get into, which I think next is Libra. I promise I'm going to learn this stuff. And so we're going to take that Libra energy and we're going to share some gifts next time. So let's talk about some things that we can take away, right? One is to think about that breath work, those deep breaths into your lower belly, into your heart, into the third eye, Joss. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah, I'm learning. All right. So do that breath work, deep breath in, breathe out that stress. Think about starting your day with lemon water. It's a great way for your gut health. It's a great way to keep your body healthy, to get that metabolism going. Because again, we're going there. It's all about that gut health. And then lastly, think about gifting to somebody in need. And maybe maybe a need is really just somebody who's going through a rough time. So think about gifting, tag us. But we're so excited that you guys are here. We would love your feedback. If you have any feedback, please share with Jesse and I. We are open to all of it. We can't wait to share more things to come over the next few months. Um, but really the biggest thing you could do for us right now is to go like our YouTube channel, click on that little notification bell, I'll be sharing some videos as I kind of prepare my freezer meal and some other meal planning ideas that I have. Um, so go like, comment, comment, comment. So comment on that YouTube channel. And there's another giveaway from both Jesse and I. So if you like it, if you share yeah. it, if you share it socially and you comment, um, I will be gifting away a free meal plan. So we'll chat about kind of what your family looks like, what you like. We'll do a free meal plan and I'll be offering 15% off an Epicure order. And Justin's got a giveaway too. Yep. Use that Mercury energy and communicate what we're doing here, what we're trying to build. Let us know what you liked, what you want more of, all of that. We're open. We're ready to serve however we can. That's what we're both so passionate about, building community around the things that we love, sharing our insight. Um, bridging our sisterhood through this virtual community. Who would have known 2023? Here we are. Um, also, yeah, service. Virgo is all about service. So please just really feel into that. Um, everyone, everyone needs it right now. It and it feeds you just as much as it feeds the person that you're helping, if not then, if not more, you know. All right. So thank you all for joining before the Zoom gods cut us off because yes, the Zoom gods will do that. Um, I hope you all have a really blessed night. We'll be reaching out. Thank you so much for being here. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll be putting this on YouTube. We'll be adding, I'll be putting on some Virgo meditations and Jenny's going to be doing some more things. So um, we'll be back before Libra season. Keep an eye on it. We can't wait. And I know, people, okay. I know there's been lots of questions. Um, definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to answer anything. I know, Chelsea, I saw, I'm seeing all of it. I'm just not, I can't do it all. <laughs> I'm figuring it out. <laughs> but I'm happy to share. And yes, I will be in Deland at some point. And I can't wait to meet all of Jenny's beautiful network that she's creating. And when you come up, Jenny, I'm getting this community started here in North Carolina. Choose the watch out world. Here we go. Heck yeah, let's do it. October, here I come. All right. Love to you all. All right, everyone. Good night.